What is up, Guru Gang? If you are new, welcome to my channel. If you have been a part of the gang, then thank you so much for coming back and clicking on to today's video, you guys. Today, I will be sharing with you guys my top most worn fragrances from summer 2023. So this is going to be kind of me repeating a video that I did towards the beginning of last year or the beginning of this year, I should say, where I did a yearly roundup of all of the fragrances that were my most worn for each season. So this is basically just me condensing that video down a little bit and going throughout the year season by season and taking you guys along that journey with me. Of course, I will still do my yearly roundup at the end, but if you did not see that video, I will link that video up at the top. I tried my best not to repeat those scents that I wore last summer. So while I did still wear those fragrances, I very much wore a lot of my other newer additions and things like that, and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. So the one thing that I truly love about collecting fragrances, you guys, is the scent memories that you create with these scents. So I'm going to try my best not to go too in depth about notes and things like that, like I would do in a full on fragrance review, but I do have reviews for some of these fragrances. So of course I will let you guys know that, but this video is gonna be more so about the things that have the biggest dents, the vibes that the scents gave me, what I was doing when I was wearing these scents. And that is just what I love because at any given moment, I can go and smell these individual fragrances and just be transported back into a moment in time, who I was with, what I was doing, and just relive those moments from my summer. So what better way to end out August by sharing these scents with you guys and let's just go ahead and jump into it. So if you are not subscribed, girl, go ahead and make sure you are subscribed, hit that red subscribe button. But let's go ahead and start with the first Breakers. This one, y'all, is actually the newest one to my collection. And surprisingly, even though it is new, it is one that I picked up in the beginning of the summer. This one probably has the most use out of it. And that is going to be BDK's Passe Soir. So I recently spoke about this in a favorites video. Um, it was like one of my summer favorites videos. And y'all, I don't know what is in here that's making it so... I don't even know how to describe this. A lot of people compare this to Goldfield and Banks Sunset Hour. A lot of people also compare this to Valentino Donna Born in Roma. And I can see that quality. I would say it smells more similar to Goldfield and Banks Sunset Hour because it just has this sparkling fruity essence about it. And it does have kind of that same sparkling opening that you get in Valentino, Donna, Born in Roma, but it's not as peppery. So I think they both do also share a black pepper note or like a pink pepper note, I would say. This one also has Keens in it. So Keens is like a very, very sweet fruit. If you go places where they sell charcuterie or if you've ever gone to like a Spanish tapas bar, I worked in a wine bar for a little while and we served charcuterie boards with Keen's paste and it was just so good. And this literally smells like some sort of sparkling Keen's champagne. Like it just smells so good y'all. And I don't know, this to me, it just reminds me of being on a yacht in Miami because I did that this summer. It was my best friend's uh, bachelorette weekend and we all went out on a yacht and it was just the most fun time that I had had in a while. So this to me just smells easy, breezy, effortless. Sun is shining, like you have on something flowy and white. This is absolutely giving me all white party. You have on something flowy, very feminine, and it's just chic. It's chic, it's sweet. It has a little bit of a syrupy quality to it as well. And I don't know, to me, it just smells like some sort of sweet, syrupy, kinks champagne <laughs> and that is just the vibe the pink pepper that's in here absolutely gives it that sparkling quality it's also a little bit woody but i personally don't pick up too much on the woody notes on my skin i more so get that sweet sparkling quality and the only thing i wish about this fragrance i wish it was stronger i wish it projected a little bit more like i do think this is a perfect summer fragrance for that reason but this is also a year-round scent and i just wish it projected a little bit more so eventually i want to try the x straight version of this because they did recently release the x straight 
and the bottle is green which is like one of my favorite colors so that's one of the another reason why i really want to pick it up but yeah overall you guys i love this fragrance and of course i will have this link in the description box below i do have a joma shop landing page so i will have that linked if you guys are looking to get some deals and save some money on these fragrances because they are not cheap but yeah i will have all that linked in the description box for y'all and that is bdk's passe squire okay y'all the next one so i purposely tried my best not to repeat fragrances from the original video that i did and to be fair i'm not because i re i wore this more so last fall i believe but for whatever reason i was gravitating towards this a lot <laughs> this summer so this is aqua de parma's mandorlo de sicilia and this is an almondy vanilla scent you guys and this is just such an easy sweet fragrance now while i will say this is absolutely hot weather appropriate this is an amazing year-round scent especially for layering because it's very easy it's very agreeable and it's just super sweet so if you like those creamy almondy vanilla fragrances i definitely think that this is worth checking out when you wear this you will probably get told that you smell like root beer especially when you first spray it on so once someone tells you that you will not be able to unsmell it unfortunately but i will say i don't think that lasts so what's giving it that root beer-esque kind of quality is i think in the top notes there's like mandarin and star anise quality together kind of gives it that root beer soda type of smell because star anise is just one of those sweet spicy um type of spices so that's why i think that this is a really amazing scent for year-round purposes because you could absolutely use this as a layering scent during like the holidays because it just kind of gives that sweet spicy scent that a lot of fall and winter fragrances have without being too heavy too dense too thick and it just dries down to a really sweet creamy vanilla almond scent and i just absolutely love it so this bottle y'all is huge um i don't know why sephora doesn't sell this anymore because when i originally got this i did get this from sephora and they had it on a major 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 sale but i think they may have stopped carrying this particular scent so again this is also linked on my joma shop landing page so i'll have that linked below but this bottle is huge y'all so the fact that i have this huge dent in here like this is a What's the milli? This is a 150 mil bottle, y'all. So the fact that I have this big of a dent in here, it just says something, but it's just very easy to throw on and go. You can absolutely overspray this without choking you or anyone else out. And I just love this one. So yeah, that is Aqua de Parma's Mandorlo de Sicilia. Next fragrance is going to be a designer scent. And I've spoken about this on my channel quite a bit in the last few months in layering videos and spring fragrance trays and things like that so this is victor and rove's flower bomb ruby orchid this you guys is so delicious if you like juicy realistic peach scents you absolutely need to check this out i put a huge huge dent in this this summer you guys because at one point i was addicted to it and one thing about me i don't know if you guys share this characteristic but i have a very obsessive personality so when i like something whether it's a food a scent a place just a, a habit like anything like that i will run it into the ground y'all like i literally obsess over things to the point that whenever i'm done with it and i'm tired of it i probably never revisit it again so this was one of my obsessions this summer and this absolutely is just a super super juicy peach forward fragrance but there's also kind of like this green note in the opening of it it just gives it this freshness like it's almost kind of like the leaves of the peach or like a white peach y'all know sometimes how white peaches kind of have that slightly sour green twinge to them so i would say it opens up with kind of that white peach fleshy smell but then as it dries down it gets a lot more syrupy a lot more vanillic and more so like vanilla soaked peaches like the peach cocktail the ones that are in the can that's kind of what it dries down to on my skin and i absolutely just love it also a massive compliment getter as well it just smells incredible so i absolutely love this one um this is one that i usually recommend people pick up from 
the Sephora sale as well as like a fragrance recommendation. So if you are looking for something that is going to get you some compliments, it's going to be easy to wear. I definitely think this is another great one that you can wear and transition into fall with as well. I definitely highly recommend this one. Again, you can pick this one up at Sephora. They usually have this one available for you to smell in store as well. And I'm pretty sure it's one of their better sellers. I'm pretty sure. Of course, the original Flower Bomb is an amazing seller, but I think this is probably the best out of the line to me because everyone has Flower Bomb. Everyone smells Flower Bomb. And I think this is just a nice one if you want to switch it up a little bit. So yeah, the next one, you guys, is going to be Killian's Princess. Now, this one, I really hate this bottle because you cannot see how much I've used, but this bottle is about halfway empty at this point. This one is a super easy to wear marshmallowy green tea type of fragrance. Now I'm usually y'all not really a fan of tea scents. I don't know why, but I can deal with something like that if I'm winding down, if I'm taking a bubble bath, if I'm trying to decompress, but like going out and wearing a tea scent, it's just not very appealing to me. But this one is done so well. It almost gives me the vibes of like a matcha tea because it's kind of like sweet, frothy, milky, creamy. But I think that's because of the marshmallow that's in here. So for me, for the most part, I really get that tea mixed with that marshmallow note. I can't even tell you guys or remember what the other notes are in here, but that's what I smell. And this was another one that was just easy for me to throw on and go like not have to think about like when you're out during the day running errands or you're hanging out with your close friends like this is just one of those super agreeable ones again you can also layer this i find that this layers really well with other floral scents because it kind of has that nice balance between the green vibe from the tea mixed with the marshmallow so it goes really really well with a lot of floral fragrances so it just smells really good, y'all. This is definitely a very likable Killian. I know a lot of Killian fragrances can be a little challenging for people. So if you are looking to start your collection with Killian or try your first Killian fragrance, I definitely recommend Princess. It's also a very, very good compliment getter as well. And it's just very likable if you like gourmand fragrances um, with just a touch of something a little bit different. So you're not smelling 100% like edible it still smells a little bit perfumey and i just really really enjoyed this one this summer next one is going to be burberry Baritz for her now i don't know what took me so long to finally start using this because i think i ended up going through the eau de toilette a really long time ago and i can't even tell you guys the difference between the two but this is the eau de parfum so i know there's like a lot of controversy or speculation or whatever in the fragrance community that the Eau de Toilette smells one way and the Eau de Parfum smells another way. Honestly, y'all, from what I can remember, I don't remember them smelling all that different that I prefer one or the over the other. I think I just got the Eau de Parfum because I remembered that the Eau de Toilette just did not last all that long. So I repurchased this one again towards the beginning of the year and I decided to go ahead and put a little dent in here. Um, and I've been using this one a lot, as you can see. So. This definitely gives me very similar vibes to the Aqua de Parma Mandorlo de Cecilia, except this has more of a citrusy lime note, and this is just a very sugary almond scent. Um, and I feel like the scent doesn't change all that much when I wear it. Like when I put this on to the moment that it dries down, I really just get this kind of sweet, creamy, citrusy almond smell. It's almost like crushed almonds in like some sparkling lime juice. That's kind of the vibe. It almost kind of smells like a cocktail in a way. Like there aren't too many cocktails that have almonds and lime juice in them, but that is what I would imagine it's smelling like. So it just smells really good. Again, another very likable scent, heavily complimented. And you can also find this very, very cheap um, in your local discount retailer. So if you have a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls, sometimes Nordstrom Rack has this, but if you guys do not have any of those in your area, of course, I will have them linked for you guys. But this is another one that's just easy. It's affordable. And I just really enjoy this one. I really enjoy almond scents at this point, as you can see, because most of the scents that have my biggest dents in them are like gourmands or almond fragrances. So yeah, that is Burberry Burritz for her. The next fragrance is another one that I picked up this year that was literally 
an instant love for me. This is Van Cleef and Arpels Orchid Vani. This is one that was on my fragrance wish list for quite a while. And when I finally got it, I could not put it down. I could not put it down. So this is very similar in scent to me. Um, if you like scents like Skylar's Vanilla Sky, if you like scents like Chaco Musk by Ari Hab, this very much gives me the vibe of both of those two combined in a way because it shares that similar DNA with Skylar's Vanilla Sky because it has that orange note and it also has that creamy vanilla but also with Chaco Musk it has that creamy chocolate in the background and this is just such an easy wear y'all it's so cozy and comforting like the way that the chocolate the orange and the vanilla are just perfectly blended together it just creates this very creamy delicious cozy scent you can literally layer this with anything to add a little bit of a creamy vanillic gourmand touch to it this also reminds me of this is going to sound really weird but if any of you guys are you know bath and body works candle people this reminds me of a candle from a few holiday seasons ago called orange chocolate truffle it was just the perfect balance of a sweet sugary orange and chocolate and that is what this smells like to me it's just one of those scents that makes you happy, it makes you smile, it's cozy, it's comforting. And again, I can literally layer this with whatever. It was not choking me out in the heat because let's be real, if you're a gourmand lover, you, we all know like we wear them year round. So this is like the perfect year round, hot weather appropriate gourmand scent. And I just love it, y'all. So spoiler alert, I have another scent from this brand on its way to me right now because this was the first one in my collection from this house. And y'all already know when I like one, I have to try some others. So y'all just stay tuned for an upcoming fragrance haul with that. But I'm just so in love with this one and I'm probably going to be wearing this one well into the fall as well. This one that was on one of my summer perfume trays, well actually my only summer perfume tray video that I did because I only had time to do one, but this is Paco Rabanne's Olympia. This is a perfect summer night out, summer date night type of scent to me. And it just smells so classy, so elegant. It's definitely a very syrupy, sweet, salty vanilla, but I wouldn't say it's one of those like beachy vanillas. This really just smells grown up, elegant, elevated. It almost kind of has like this spa-like quality about it like if you were to go to a really really nice resort that was all inclusive and you're like walking into the lobby and they have some sort of i don't know warmer warming up like the area the scent in the area that's kind of what this smells like to me it just smells like you are somewhere fancy expensive but it also has that very salty vanilla that kind of reminds you a little bit of like the ocean or like an ocean breeze I don't even like to call this a fresh scent. I do still feel like this leans a little bit more gourmand, but it also has that perfumey quality about it. So it's syrupy sweet, but it still smells like a perfume at the end of the day. And I just absolutely love how this smells, y'all. So it's just, this is just one of my favorites. This is literally one of my favorites. And I have not gotten around to trying any of the other flankers, um, but I just love this one so much that I don't see how I can like any of the others more than this one. So yeah, y'all. Anyways, if you have not tried this one, I would personally say you could probably still wear it in the fall. Honestly, you probably still could, but this just screams summer nights to me and I absolutely love it. So yeah, that is Paco Rabanne's Olim Pea. We're on the Paco Rabanne train. So the next fragrance is going to be Paco Rabanne Fame. Now, I don't think I ever did a full-on review for this fragrance. I know you guys asked me to do one. I'm so sorry. I never got around to it, but I featured this on a few different perfume trays. I did a few layering combos with this. So at this point, if you just search my name and the name of this fragrance, you will find any video that I have done associated with it. It's just a love for me. I absolutely love this. I emptied a travel size of this. I have like a little travel size set from Sephora, um, which I'm pretty sure they still have. So I will link that in the description box, but I emptied that and then I went ahead and got the full bottle and put a little dent in the full size bottle. So this is a woody jasmine mango fragrance. And honestly, to me, 
you would think that a mango fragrance smells very summery, but to me, I got a little bit more of that soapy jasmine and the woody vibes in here more than I got the mango. So I feel like the mango just added more so this creamy warmth to the fragrance. And I find that happens a lot with a lot of mango scents. I wouldn't say there was a super distinguishable mango note in here to my nose, but I still really, really enjoyed it. It just had that very perfumey type of vibe. It was definitely very grown, very grown woman, sexy night out kind of vibe. Very kind of like intoxicating, like when you walk past someone, someone's going to turn some heads and get people asking what you are wearing. It's absolutely a date night sexy fragrance to me. Definitely one that I was wearing when I was going out. I had a cute, sexy dress on, some high heels a slicked up bun or when I was wearing a red lip like that was the vibes for me when I was wearing this fragrance this summer and I really really enjoyed it a lot of people hate on this fragrance for the bottle but honestly it was just never that deep to me <laughs> like it's a bottle I personally think the bottle is cute and at the end of the day I love having interesting looking bottles in my perfume collection anyway so I thought it was cute and I love the fragrance overall. So yeah, that is Paco Rabanne's face. This right here is Yara Taos. Now I did review this fragrance in my Arabian Summer Perfume video. So if you did not see that, I will link that in the cards as well because I basically compared this scent to Paco Rabanne's fame. And honestly, this is definitely a very similar scent to that scent. I do feel like this is their attempt at creating that fragrance. But what I will say with this one, you guys, is this fragrance added in to Paco Rabanne's fame what it did not have, in my opinion, and that was that very distinct mango note. So while I do still feel like this is a jasmine, mango, woody, vanilla type of scent, and I think it is amazing, I personally feel like there's more of a prominent mango note in here that was not in fame. So while they do smell extremely similar, if you want more of that mango sweetness, I do think this is one worth checking out because I smell the mango a lot more in here. It's a lot more ripe and juicy. And then of course, I still get the jasmine and the vanilla as well. But I really enjoyed this one when I did not want to wear fame and I wanted something a little bit softer. Like I would say this is daytime and fame gave me a little bit more of like a nighttime kind of vibe. So if you didn't like this because you felt like it was too heavy and sharp on the jasmine and you wanted more mango, I do think this is one that you should check out. And honestly, this has probably become my personal favorite out of the Yara line because I never really was 100% in love with the Yara in the pink bottle. And I'm kind of on the fence about the Yara in the white bottle right now because I loved it when I first got it. But lately, there ha this patchouli note that's in there has really been turning me off. So I'm debating with myself if I'm going to keep that one. But Yara Taos, absolutely love her. And she was just bomb for me this summer. Almost done, y'all. Now that I am on the Arabian fragrance train. So the next fragrance that I wore a ton this summer was La Tapas on Zom Gold, which very, very similar scent profile to Oriana by Parfums de Marly but this one lasts way longer, literally. If you've ever smelled Oriana by Parfums de Marly, that is what this smells like. It's just such a fluffy, sweet, girly, marshmallowy, raspberry, orange blossom type of scent. That is literally the best way I can describe it. It kind of smells like raspberry cotton candy and orange blossom. And I think if you are a fan of the scent DNA of Killian's Princess, I feel like this reminds me of it in a way because it has this kind of green floral twinge to it, but it's still overall a sweet, fruity, marshmallowy fragrance. So if you like that fragrance, I definitely think this is one worth checking out. This is also an easy way to get that Oriana scent DNA without paying an arm and a leg, girl. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this one, especially for the longevity. Like, I just definitely think it's worth it. And these bottles, I mean, these bottles are absolutely insane and incredible. And I just absolutely am obsessed with this. So even though you can't see through this bottle, y'all, I would say this is probably maybe about halfway full because I have been going to town on this. Like, I think I picked this up in the spring 
and I was just wearing it down, like from the moment that I got it up until now. So yeah, <laughs> that is La Tapa's Anzam Gold. Next one is one of my loves, one of my faves from this house, which by the way, if you guys want me to do like a video talking about all my favorite fragrances from this house, let me know because I feel like I have a good amount of scents from this house that I can do a dedicated review. So y'all let me know. But this is Coco Vani by Mansara. And this is another large bottle, you guys. This is a four fluid ounce bottle. So just so you guys can see the dent that's in here. This is pretty significant. This is a pretty significant dent. Um, I have had this bottle for a while. So that is why the juice is actually a little bit more ambery. But when you buy this fragrance for the first time, it's definitely more of like a yellowy juice. But as you guys know, with vanilla fragrances, the longer you have them and let them sit, the more it deepens and gets a lot juicier and sweeter. And that is what happened with Coco Vanille, you guys. And honestly, I feel like Mansara's remind me a lot of like Middle Eastern fragrances because I would say half of the Mansara's in my collections, I was not a super, super fan of when I first sprayed them out. But when I revisited them months later, they smelled 10 times better. So while I did really like Coco Vanille when I first got it, it smelled so much better as the juice got darker in age. So while this scent is called Coco Vanille, of course it is a coconut heavy fragrance. So for me, I get this very fleshy coconut, like meaty coconut, just like the white part of the coconut. Like if you were to literally cut one open and just stick your face in there, like. That is what it smells like in the opening, but there's also peach in here and vanilla. And for me, I really just get this fleshy, coconutty, peachy combo. And I wouldn't say I get a very prominent vanilla note, but I do think the vanilla contributes more so to the creaminess of the fragrance. And it's just very likable, very easy to throw on and go. It's not a super heavy coconut vanilla scent and i just think it's amazing i wore this so much it's so sweet and just if you like peach heavy fragrances i definitely think this is one worth checking out and this is another one that got me a lot of compliments easy to layer with other things i think i layered this also with paco Rabanne's fame and olympia i was just smelling so good y'all so yeah this is one of those ones that's super easy to layer with it's not like doesn't have a lot of challenging notes or anything. It's just really easy to throw on and go. And I absolutely love this. So if you are a gourmand lover and you want to check out some fragrances from this house, I definitely recommend checking out Coco Vanilla. Right, y'all, this next one's probably the most controversial of all the scents in this video. This is going to be Kayali's Yum Pistachio Gelato. I do have a full-on review on this fragrance. So I will link that in the cards if y'all are interested. But y'all, this scent got so much freaking hate, okay, when it first was released. And I was one of the few that loved it the moment that I smelled it because it's just like... <sighs> I love this scent, y'all. Still to this day, I smell this and it instantly makes me happy. It makes me smile. I think a lot of the controversy came because everyone was expecting this to be super sweet, super gourmand, cotton candy, whatever, whatever. Like from the notes, you would assume it's going to be overtly sweet and just very artificial, syrupy sweet. But honestly, you guys, I feel like Kayali is still a Middle Eastern fragrance brand. So it's kind of like, I have trained myself to know not to expect anything super literal, super like run of the mill, crowd pleasing type of scent because everything that comes from her, from that house, everything that Mona creates is super unique. And that's what I love about her scent. So this one was no different. It has kind of this clean, green vibe it remind i think i said this in my review too it reminds me a lot of killian's princess but it also reminds me a lot of um a lot of soft by ari hob because it has that soft creamy marshmallowy cotton candy note it's like it's sweet and gourmand and fluffy and whipped and lactonic but at the same time it has this clean powdery essence about it and i love powdery scents as well so i think that's why it was just a love at first sniff for me it's just so easy to wear and 
Every time I wear this, I get compliments and it lasts a really long time on me. Like I would not say this is a beast mode projector, but also with Kaoli fragrances, with a lot of Middle Eastern fragrances, you guys, the longer they sit, the better they get, <laughs> okay? And that's, I mean, that's just the common theme with Middle Eastern fragrances. And I definitely have experienced that with this scent. I will say I experienced pretty great longevity with this the minute that I got it, but the more that I wear it and the longer that I have it, it just lasts even longer on me. So I don't know, I slick had to like take a break from using it because I didn't want to like completely use it up before it fully gets a chance to macerate. So I put a huge dent in this for this to have been a brand new release, a brand new addition to my collection, y'all like this bottle is more than halfway done. So that just shows you I absolutely loved it. But if I do happen to finish it, I will definitely be picking this up in the larger size because I just love this y'all. It's just an easy to wear, it's just an easy to wear scent. Like, I don't know. I personally don't find anything wrong with it, but again, scent is very subjective. And this is one of the scents that kind of like had a lot of people feeling a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, this is definitely not blind by safe, but I still highly recommend it. And I love wearing this this summer. Y'all, the last scent on this list, it's a little bittersweet because this scent is discontinued. Um, I did find an Amazon link for it. So of course I will have that linked for you guys. And I'm trying to decide if I want to buy a backup bottle, but I, I don't think I will, you guys. I don't think I will. But the scent that I'm talking about is Giorgio Armani's C Fiori. Now I absolutely love this scent, you guys. It's just so girly, so playful and it's got a little bit of this lactonic creamy quality to it, but I don't know. It just smells very feminine, very likable, very girly. This is another compliment magnet as well. And I would definitely put it in the same scent category again as Killian's Princess or even Oriana because it has kind of this balance of fruity berries and like this kind of floral creamy vibe in a way. So I would not say this is 100% like gourmand or anything like that, but it just has that very pretty floral, creamy, fruity type of vibe, if that makes sense. It just smells like pixie dust and candy and glitter. Like if I were to classify this as any scent, this is definitely one of those like ultimate girly fragrances since Barbie would wear. Like that's the vibe with this scent and I just absolutely love it but I feel like I have so many scents in my collection right now that have a similar scent DNA to this. I think I would be okay not repurchasing this. So while I have my moments where I'm like, I need to get a backup bottle, I also think I'm okay finishing this and just not repurchasing it because while I loved it, it was a fave. I'm very much one of those people that I don't feel like I need backups of a particular perfume unless it's something that I do a lot of layering with um, and I use it more of a layering base because otherwise, usually once I finish an entire perfume bottle, I'm kind of over it anyway and I'm ready to move on to something else. So I think that's kind of what's gonna happen with this. This bottle is, I would say I've got about 30% left in this bottle and I do think I wanna try to go ahead and finish it up um, or I might just save it until next year, who knows girl, but I still love and enjoy the scent and like I said, I will have it links for you guys if y'all are interested in checking it out. Um, but this is definitely the most girly, feminine, fluffy, playful of the Giorgio Armani C range. And I still think it's a very enjoyable scent. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about the scents that I was loving this summer for one reason or another. And if you guys have any of these, let me know how you feel about them in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned because I will be doing a fall version of this as well once we get through the fall and start transitioning into the winter, because I really do like doing these little wrap up style videos. It just helps me to see what I have used and what I need to start using more of. So I feel very, very proud of myself because while I did wear a lot of the scents that I wore last summer, I still feel like I wore more so the newer fragrances in my collection. And I'm very proud of myself for that. So Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.